Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that the future of the Star Wars universe seems to be quite expansive, not just with their new books, novels, comics, and video games, but also, let's not forget about the new Star Wars TV shows and Star Wars movies that are currently in the works by Disney and Lucasfilm, as well as a handful of other Star Wars lore that's coming into the equation by John and Dave. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing about the new universe between all these different creators coming on board, apart from Favreau and Filoni, they are in the process of hiring new creators to take control over other aspects of the upcoming shows, which, by the way, is good news. But one thing that Favreau and Filoni are focused on is really creating a lot of retcons, a lot of changes toward many aspects and elements of the sequel trilogy movies and exactly how they're going to go about doing that, essentially. And that brings us to where they are right now. Now, we already know that John and Dave have a big strategy, a big plan being put in place to change and literally transform the character of Rey in the sequel trilogy movies, of course, with the new lore coming out by later next year that's going to be made officially canon. We already know that Daisy Ridley has been in the talks with John and Dave and is in the process of getting hired for a new post-episode 9 series that's going to actually connect to the upcoming post-episode 9 movie that is actively in development. We talked about that as well. Now, everything related to this has a lot to do with Rey's parents getting changed and more elements of Rey's backstory getting shifted around. That's going to ma be made canon next year, of course. Now, with that being said, with Favreau and Filoni embracing many retcons to the Skywalker saga that will be made canon by the end of 2023, one of the biggest changes of all is set to impact the character of Rey drastically with John and Dave's new approach for the character. Now, it's described that currently one of the biggest changes of all that they are applying to Rey's backstory in the Star Wars canon is not only changing her name to Kira, but also by attaching her to the Kenobi bloodline and how they are going to officially label her as Kira Kenobi in the brand new Star Wars canon for the future merchandise as well. Now, the plan is to make Rey the grandchild of Kenobi's brother, who was actually hinted at in the Kenobi series, and that part of the backstory that is being written by John and Dave now is set to implement the fact that Kira was hidden away on Tatooine and given a false name under the name of Rey by her father, Maximus Palpatine, and her mother, Mira. Now, let's just ta tap into this for a second. Now, as you all know, currently the names of Rey's parents are simply Dathan, and Miramur. This is all actually told to us in one of the books that launched back in June of this year. It's actually called Shadows of the Sith. It's a story about Lando, Luke, Ochi, Rey as a child, and a lot more aspects of Exegol. But in there, you learn that Rey's parents' names are Dathan and Miramur. I never really liked those names, to be honest. When I was reading the book, I was like, this is a very strange way to label the descendant of Palpatine and also a random character. But now what John and Dave are doing is that they're changing the names from Dathan to Maximus Palpatine to Miramur to, of course, just simply Mira. Now, of course, they are going to set it in stone that Mira is actually going to have a big involvement in the upcoming lore. They're both going to be force sensitives, both Maximus and Mira. Now, moving past all of this too, we already know that there's a lot of stories that are being planned for Palpatine's son in the upcoming canon by Favreau and Filoni. They want to expand that character. And in Legends, by the way, Palpatine's son was called Triclops, a very bizarre name, but in this scenario, I think it's a very unique name. It really kind of sounds like a Palpatine name, Maximus Palpatine. It sounds very you know, um, unique. It sounds very obscure for, you know, the Star Wars universe in a way, I guess, but it does work, in my opinion. It does work. So, moving past all of this too, all right, on top of that, currently, of course, Rey's parents' names are Dathan and Miramur and are going to be changed to Maximus and Mira by Favreau and Filoni. Now, the decision 
to change Ray's parents' names comes from their disappointment with Lucasfilm's creatives, deciding on those names and felt they were at a place and are going to change their backstory as well. Maximus Palpatine is now set to be the legitimate son of Palpatine instead of a genetic experiment through gene splicing, and is going to be very powerful through the Force this time around to make things more intense for the Star Wars lore for the fans to learn about. The plan is to make it that Maximus Palpatine was at one point loyal to his father, Sheev, and later disobeyed him and ran off. Now, the thing about this that I like is that they're adding a personality to Rey's father, Maximus Palpatine. What I like about this is that not only are they going to make him now Force-sensitive, but they're also going to create a side story in the upcoming canon that Maximus actually once obeyed his father, and then eventually no longer obeyed him and ran off into exile. Now, in Legends it's totally different, but in the canon right now, how it is before John and Dave make these new changes is that Dathan Palpatine, or just Dathan, was actually a non-force sensitive user, a very weak, genetic clone essentially of Palpatine, but is considered the son through gene splicing, if that makes sense. He's a clone of Palpatine, but he's the son of Palpatine because of how they gene spliced. So. Now what they're doing is they're getting rid of that and they're going to make him the legitimate son of Palpatine in the upcoming lore. As you all know, in Legends, I believe it was Triclops was the son of both Palpatine and Sly Moore. So it's very likely they could do something like that. We're not quite sure if it's going to be Sly Moore again, but they are doing something just like that again in the upcoming canon of making him a legitimate son and not just some abomination of a clone, right? So, it's a very interesting, you know, way to go. It's a very interesting way to call her Kira Kenobi now in the upcoming merchandise that they're planning, in the upcoming comics, books, novels, and even mentioning it in several upcoming live action projects that are going to be in this post episode 9 era. Again, Favreau and Filoni have a game plan. It's all about creating foundations. And The Mandalorian is a foundation. Why? It actually spawns other spin-offs. Ahsoka, Boba Fett, etc. Right? And now, they're going to create a post-episode 9 series that's going to spawn other spin-off shows. Also, with The Old Republic, the same exact scenario. They want to create m pretty much around four to five foundations of shows that's going to create tons of spin-offs that can actually work hand in hand with different eras of the franchise. And particularly, I think it's a very interesting way to go about doing it. It's a little bit different than how the MCU works. It's going to be pretty much, you know, John and Dave specifically catering to one era at a time here and there. So overall, you know, let me know what you guys have to say about all of these changes coming to Ray's parents. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.